to the ring for his first big day in his professional boxing career as he makes his first title challenge for the WBA Featherweight Championship. Bernard Taylor, in the course of his career, had all kinds of national honors as an amateur, a four-time Golden Gloves champion, a two-time national amateur champion, 1979 World Cup champion, and the 1980 Pan American Games champion. But he, like so many others, was denied the opportunity to fight for an Olympic gold medal because of the boycott. Charlotte Mayor Eddie Knox among those greeting him as he comes into the ring. And I would think one of the things that young Taylor must realize as he begins his title challenge today is that the man coming into the ring now, Pedroza, is a very strong finisher, but a relatively slow starter. Pedroza will go to war. He likes nothing better than to tease the opponent into a war. It is not Taylor's game. He is a mover. He is a boxer. He does not carry the power that Petroza carries. He has 10 knockouts listed among his 18 victories. But as I said, he has never gone in the ring against a man the caliber of Eusebio Pedroza, who comes in glittering spangles all over his robe, and they almost run together as they dance in the ring. And both of them look like all of the adrenaline glands are open. Eusebio Pedroza was shocked by the death of Salvador Sanchez because he felt there would be a reunification fight for the championship at the featherweight weight. Sanchez being the WBC title holder and Pedroza the WBA. But the untimely death of Sanchez denied him that big payday. Now, the ring announcer Harold Johnson for the introduction of the fighter. Introducing in the blue corner, wearing black trunks with green trim, the undefeated challenger with a record of 18 and all, including 10 knockouts, the third ranked fighter in the world boxing association, by the way, standing, weighing 125 and a half pounds, weighing 175 and a half pounds, the champion of Carolina, the BC Express, Bernard Taylor! from the referee Stanley Cristodolo this will be his third title fight for Eusebio Pedroza and he expressed some surprise when he realized that in this country at least Pedroza has gained a reputation of being a brawler and of course most of that reputation having come from his fight against Juan Laporte when he had uh, beaten Laporte and gotten the decision at ringside and later on appeal, the New Jersey Athletic Commission under Joe Walcott reversed the decision. But most people are perfectly willing to let that stand as a decision for Pedroza with Laporte now uh, becoming the WBC featherweight champion after defeating Mario Miranda. And that bout taking place as a result of the death of Salvador Sanchez. And now the referee summons the two fighters to the center of the ring for his instructions. Ace Miller, the manager, Bob Bernard Taylor. Check in. Good luck to you both. Check in. Right. Santiago Del Rio, the manager of Pedroza. The tail of the tape. Taylor a year younger. Uh, the edge and height to the champion Pedroza. He had to dry out a little bit this morning in order to make the weight. The reach is relatively the same. 
It is the boxer, Taylor, against a great body puncher, Eusebio Pedroza. Scheduled for 15 rounds. You saw the champion smiling when the boos echoed down on him from the obvious pro Taylor crowd. But he seems loose, relaxed. Taylor did not seem very tight an hour before the fight. Laced his own shoe, listened to music, rested, and knows full well what he needs to do. Taylor is a very difficult fellow to hit. He's a constant mover. Pedroza would love to have him go flat-footed occasionally so he could work on his body. Taylor has never gone more than 10 rounds. So if he gets past 10, it'll be interesting to see what happened over the last five. The referee will score today. Two judges and the referee will deliver the scorecard. Ten point must scoring system. Three knockdown rule in effect. Mandatory eight count. No standing eights. And no saving of the bell except obviously in the final round. circling and this figures to be pretty much the pattern at least for the first few rounds and looking over the 18 fights that Bernard Taylor has had you don't find any name opponents of any consequence the reason for that admitted to by Ace Miller that during his early going when he first turned professional he protected he had some soft touches. But once Taylor emerged as a bona fide professional, then Ace Miller had trouble finding somebody to fight him. Nobody wanted him. It was too difficult to handle. Pedroza conserving energy, watching the man circling, and so far has done nothing. champion bobs away from it. Both men probing as Taylor tries to flurry in the final seconds of the first round. The first round was almost a no-hitter. Now let's see what happens here in round number two. Taylor will be the man doing most of the moving. Pops it to the left of the forehead. Eusebio will stalk him. And you get up into 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, if it goes that far. Look out. be wetter if he had uh, just fallen out of the shower. The frozen completely dry. Very calm. Mr. Dolo says, let's have some fighting. When are you going to start fighting? He heads the South African Boxing Association. The judges are New Jensen from Denmark, Oscar Kenoppen from Argentina. The corner people are Santiago Del Rio, Henry Douglas, Paul Pedroza, and Lionel Hoyt, Ace Miller, Jay Dudley, and Biff Holstein for Taylor. Bernard Taylor is not going to step in there and trade with Pedroza. He's not going to do it. Pedroza's going to have to go after him. And he will eventually. 
First major move right there by the champion, but Taylor escaped. Taylor will try to pick it. Like that. deflected by the champion part of it got there ten seconds to go in round two Some of you may have wondered why in the world would the champion, the Drosy, come from Panama to Charlotte, North Carolina to fight a native son if he were not totally confident that he could win the fight? Well, I'm sure that he and Santiago Del Rio were when they signed the contract, or as even we fight here in round number three. But over and beyond that, the important factor of why this fight is taking place here is money. And Eusebio Pedroza has not had that many big paydays. As I noted, he didn't get the opportunity for the big payday in the unification fight with Salvador Sanchez. A little quick one-two by Taylor and then Bernard on his bicycle. He's a frustrating fellow to fight. He just picked him, moved, picked him, moved. Rosa has made no real bold move to engage him yet. He made one move at the end of the second round. And one slight move at the end of the first round. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line. At the end of this round, we'll take a station break. Again, the referee. Stanley Cristobolo of South Africa says, let's have a fight, guys. A lot of us have come a long way. But those, of course, speaks very little, if any, English. But I'm sure he understood what Cristobolo was saying to him, because this is the third time this particular referee has handled one of his title fights. Cut off the ring now. Taylor is so quick, it's hard to catch. Taylor missing with the right hand as they go inside and bang away. The big one. for 15 World Boxing Association featherweight championship on the line with the champion Eusebio Pedroza in the lighter trucks against Bernard Taylor. The champion wearing the black shoes, the challenger wearing the white shoes and the black trunks. And we have not had much action so far in the fight. A little milling in the late going. That's a good right hand by the champion Pedroza snapping Taylor's head back. Just missed with the right hand as Taylor tied him. The 
Georgia knows full well that sooner or later Taylor is going to slow down something. Not very much if he can keep this pace for 12, 13 rounds. Sooner or later. Goes for the body punch and misses. Pedroza is a lethal body puncher. He has accumulated his knockouts. Very seldom do you find one of his knockouts occurring, though, off one punch. It's an accumulation of punishment that he administers, and generally to the body. But he has not hit Taylor's body yet. Pedroza as Taylor came over the top. Champion growing more and more aggressive. Half a minute to go in round four. Hard right hand by Pedroza. Taylor ties him up and then escapes. A right hand by Taylor as Pedroza moved in. of round four. We're in round five now. Schedule for 15. Both men landing right hands in round four. The harder blow to the champion Pedroza. He was, has not been able as yet to reach the body of Bernard Taylor. He tried twice. Snaps the left hand into Taylor's face. Another left hand by Pedroza. on the right from Panama City. Short right hand by Bernard Taylor. you close he can really wing you with left hooks to the body punish you he has not been able to reach Taylor yet Taylor Wild can't get escaping against Laporte is Taylor is, is almost so obvious that he wants to retaliate at the first indication of a low blow or any fouling tactics. And he laid one on him right there and is probably lucky he didn't get penalized for it more than he did. He just got a warning from the referee. No point taken away. Taylor snaps the left hand into the champion's face twice. Most people feel that Pedroza's good enough to beat most any featherweight around. Or joust with any featherweight around and anywhere in the world without having to resort to the tactics. But he will go just as far as the authority of the ring will allow. Taylor tags him with the left hand. Bernard Taylor holding his own so far against the champion.
Hawks with a scuffle and coming around in the corner, resulting in Taylor sticking his head under the champion's chin and pulled him back into the corner. The youngsters fought very well. Taylor missing a left hand. Pedroza getting him back toward the corner, coiling for the attack. Watch that right hand load up, and he wings it in. It was not a low blow, but you see Taylor retaliating by sticking his head and shoulder right in there. Taylor on the right. And Taylor now will spin him and spin him into the corner and bend him back over the rope. Put his head right under his chin. Oh, that is, I guess, a calling card to the champion that I know what you've done before, pal. You're not going to do it to me. We'll see. As we go now to round six. Best round of the fight far and away in round five. Taylor's confidence may grow after a round like that. See, Taylor, the champion, with one good right hand. Pedroza is not a man to get careless with. He just missed with that right hand. Taylor picked part of it off as it came over the top. And then he was able to tie up the champion inside. Good left hand by Pedroza. He missed with his right as he came in. But he managed to get Taylor on the side of the face with a good left. He's after him now. And Taylor so hard to find. with a record of 34-3 and one no decision. That no decision came as a result of his getting cut in the second round of a tune-up fight back in July. The injury that brought on the postponement of this fight from August to this date. Seconds to go. Round six. Tapping left hand by Taylor. We're at the Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina. WBA featherweight championship scheduled for 15. Champion Eusebio Pedroza, Panama. The challenger Bernard Taylor out of Knoxville, Tennessee, native son of Charlotte. The referee Stanley Christodoulou of South Africa. The judges are Oscar Van Kenappen of Argentina and Lou Jensen of Denmark. And in this particular bout, under WBA rules, the referee does have a vote. Fight is very close. The last two rounds, we've had some action. The first four, not much. Pedroza making his 15th title defense. Since winning it from Cecilio Lastra, in April of 1978. No other featherweight champion has ever defended or been as active as Pedroza. Champion 
Mike sort of lost his balance as they banged together and got the crowd excited a little bit. And the referee says to Taylor, watch your head. It didn't appear there was any collision at that time. Good stiff left hand by Pedroza. kidneys keep them in front right at the belt line Taylor flicks him off with a left right to the head round is about over is very close and we'll watch that in the respective corner as Henry Douglas and Santiago Del Rio talk to their man Pedroza as Ace Miller and Jay Dudley and Biff Holstein work with their man Bernard Taylor that is Taylor and they're rubbing on the cheekbone and he may have a little welt growing there you see their heads come right together. You see Pedroza wing that right hand to the kidney area and then come up behind the head in a rabbit punch. Not particularly to hurt as much as to aggravate, perhaps, and to accumulate punishment. But Taylor, in both of the instances where they came together, and particularly in the second exchange, fought him off with a stiff combination to the head. So now we go along to round number eight. And the game may get a little grittier from here on. Pedroza goes to the body. Digs that hard left hand in there. He likes it right on the belt line. Taylor in the black trunk. It's been moving from the very beginning of this fight. The champion has been stalking.
being told by the referee, keep your punches up as he went right to the belt line. Scheduled for 15. Bernard Taylor boxing with his feet as much as his head. Missed with the right hand and slid off the side of the head. Just missed with an overhand right as he stepped in with it. And the champion was not able to counter. I guess you could describe Bernard Taylor as sort of a, a running counterpuncher. Constantly moving as we wind down to the end of round eight. We're into round nine now. And let's see whether or not Bernard Taylor has lost any of his quickness in his legs. Training for 15 <coughs> rounds of the gym and going 15 rounds of the ring with a man like Eusebio Pedroza are two different things. But Taylor looks fresh. Here in round nine. And Pedroza now increasing his tempo a little bit as he pursues trying to nail Taylor down. punch of the round. There haven't been that many punches thrown in this whole fight. Champion missing with a right hand lead. Right hand by Pedroza. Again, not a lot on it, but it did get to the face of Taylor. We'll alert our local station as Taylor scores with the left hand that at the end of this round we will take a station break. Champion misses. Taylor gets him with a short left hook. Taylor counter punching very well. Off the lunges of Pedroza. Savio having to go after him to get to it. And Taylor able to counter. Right hand by Bernard. Misses as the champion pulls it away. And Stanley Cristodolo of South Africa separates him. Both scoring lefts to the body. And the South African referee quick to separate him unless they start mauling each other on the road. Every time in that exchange that Pedroza went to the kidney, Taylor went with a rabbit punch. We'll be back with more of this WBA featherweight championship fight after this word from our local station. We're in the round 10. Now here comes the element of experience on Taylor's part conditioning on Taylor's part against the known history of Pedroza. From here on, historically, he has been dynamite. Tough, tough, tough. Let's see whether or not Bernard Taylor has reached the point in his career where he can weather the storm, carry the fight to the champion. It's got to be close in the scoring. Just has to be. fight. It's been a pick here and a pick there as the challenger has been able to beat the champion to the punch, stayed on the run, 
stayed away from Pedroza's power. The WBA featherweight championship fight. Bernard Taylor undefeated at 18 bouts as a professional, 18 and 0. Pedroza having lost only three times. He has not lost since he won this championship. In April from Lustra, Panama City. Knocked him out in the 13th round. He has not lost since that time. This is his 15th title defense. And a, oh, a good left hook by Taylor. And the champion went back on his heels with that one. May have been Taylor's best punch of the fight. He caught Pedroza coming in. And the left hook landed over the left eye and it rocked him. Don't know that it hurt him all that much, but it did rock him. <laughs> Pedroza digging to the body. Taylor snapping the left hook in the face and gets away from it. Beginning to see some concern in the champion's corner, too. It's that close. Rosa digging into the body again, getting both shots in. <laughs> Taylor went a little flat-footed that time, took a shot to the body, came back for the right hand of the champion's head as we go inside. Ten seconds to go in round ten. exchange at the bell. I thought the harder punch might have belonged to the champion, though Taylor, as they came to the bell, landed a combination. And for the first time in that round, Bernard Taylor went flat-footed for just a moment. Rosa now trying to put on the pressure. Kind of an interesting thing uh, about uh, the presence of Paredes, General Paredes here. He had decreed, he had, it, it became public knowledge that Sugar Ray Leonard would not fight uh, Pepino Cuevas before he fought uh, Roberto Duran. Well, the WBA is headquartered in Panama. And all boxers in Panama, their income is tax-free, and all national champions receive a lifetime pension from the government. So boxing is obviously a major activity in that country. Taylor coming over the top with it and it nullified the intentions of the body attack by the champion. Taylor still able to move, still looks fresh. The pros has got to be getting a little dizzy from going around and around and around chasing him. And he probably is getting pretty concerned about everything. Left hand by Taylor. Another one caught the champion as he moved in. Taylor at 25 years. Pedroza at 26 years. Pedroza at edge and height. Reaches about the same. Not much in that body exchange there by either man. Taylor's foot speed and his ability to move is just nullified Pedroza's traditional body attack.
intermission between rounds, there is no question. There is concern in the champion's corner. Taylor continues his pattern of moving, picking, an occasional exchange, and could be ahead. to those kind of tactics trying to get him and missed him and almost fell down. Both men taking body punches as Chris Cadolo steps between them and admonishes both for not stepping back. This is round 12, WBA featherweight championship fight. The champion, Pedroza, in the lighter trunks. Bernard Taylor, the challenger, in the dark trunks. We reflected at the very beginning of today's telecast on ABC's Larger of Sports. There were great war brawls between uh, Willie Pep and Sandy Sadler. Now, these two have not been that close together that much today hard right hand to the body by the champion. One right hand is all he's able to get out of it. Taylor has been well prepared for this fight by Ace Miller. Can't pin him in the corner. Champion has been Unable to cut off the ring and stop it. Right hand. And Pedroza goes right to the groin with a shot. But not enough to bother Taylor. And Cristodolo gets him apart one more time. Right hand right at the belt line by Pedroza. Stood in there well. Ten seconds to go in round 12. Pedroza looking for a street fight, and Taylor won't have it. We go to round 13. Break the back. And it's incumbent now on Taylor not to get into a brawl with Pedroza. He stabs him four times with a stiff left hand as the exchange in the center of the ring. Taylor, in order to beat this man, is going to have to square off with him, and apparently they have decided that he's fresh enough to have a go at it here in round 13 as Taylor stands in. The referee does have a ballot. Looks like a little bit of a cut around the left eye and there is now blood coming down from Bernard Taylor's left eye and it may have come when they banged their heads together. Their heads banged in the early going of, of that exchange here in round 13 and the flow of blood is outside the eye of Bernard Taylor. It's in the right in the edge of the eyebrow on the outer portion of the left eye. You can see it trickling down his face. Rosa pursuing the man goes hard to the body as he catches him on the rope but Taylor ties him up. The Rosa getting one shot when he gets Taylor into those close quarters and then Taylor's able to handle it. The blood is not a factor in the small cut in the corner of Bernard's left eye. Long left hand by Pedroza. to me like there's a little bit of a cut in the corner. Well, I guess not. I thought for a moment the champion might have an abrasion around the left eye, but not so. Good left hand by Pedroza. Pedroza's 
are now finding him a little more in this round than he has in any round. to you. There's really been no evidence of intent to foul in the fight. Taylor's now got the blood running down his cheek again. He has reopened that little cut in the corner of, of Taylor's eye. And it was seemed to be caused by a butt. As they bumped head when they first came together in round 13. Looks like some of the run is gone from Bernard Taylor's leg. He's now tying up the champion more and not just outrunning it. Left hook by the champion. Taylor slipping away from the rest of it. Bernard Taylor's standpoint, well executed, technically, not the most exciting championship fight we've ever seen, but he's followed his plan and pattern very well as Pedroza tagged him with that sharp left hook. The champion, the taller, by about three inches. Rosa again trying to go to the body, but Taylor fights him off and then ties him up. Taylor Wilde. Fourteen's about over. We've got one left. I don't think either man has enough of an edge in the fight to feel secure about it. The champion is finishing strong as we anticipated he would. Bernard Taylor built an early lead. Taylor now may be in a position where he will want to go for an exchange or two with the champion. One thing he needs most of all to do in this early going of this final round is get off first. Because you know Pedroza is going to go after him. The WBA featherweight championship could be decided in this final round. sort of stuff legends are made of. But again, I say tactically, from Taylor's point of view, well executed. Home crowd chanting Taylor, 
Taylor. The judges are Oscar McKinnopin of Argentina, Nude Jensen of Denmark, the referee Stanley Cristodolo, South Africa. Those three will cast the ballot. like he may have a cut in the corner of his right eye. His heads have been banging together here in the last three rounds. I don't know if the blood is from Taylor's cut or if the champion is in fact cut. could come out of this with a win. It could be that close. So while we're waiting for the scorecards to be tabulated and get the official decision, let's again join Jim Lapley in New York for a sports update. Trying to uh, keep it as quiet as possible in the ring. And again, I would like to say, I thought the South African referee, Christodolo, did a fine job in handling the fight. Has to be very close. Has to be very close. And Harold Johnson, the ring announcer, is still waiting for the official decision. Not a lot of action in it. The champion was never able to pin Bernard Taylor down long enough to inflict the damage from his his body attack. Taylor just simply outran him. And then in the late rounds, when he lost some of the run in his legs, he was able to nullify the champion's attack. And it has to go right down to the last digit, I would think, for a decision. They will count it and recount it. Crowd of looks like the crowd is in the neighborhood of 6,000 people here at the Coliseum, maybe more. And we're still waiting for the decision. That's Bernard Taylor on the left, and the champion Pedroza on the right. And it is taking forever to get the decision, and now we've got it. And here is the ring announcer. Two judges and a referee casting the ballots. They are checking and double checking. And now I think we're going to get the decision. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> referee Stanley Christodoula scores at Pedroza 147, Taylor 143. <laughs> championship had to be close Pedroza in getting the draw and he came late to get the draw with Taylor he will keep his WBA featherweight championship <laughs>